here's what we're going to do today. We're going to try to fix the e-box with all of this beautiful goodness. That's right. I did say fix. And the reason why I said fix is because e-box is still broken. Um, I don't know what to say. I've been dealing with the company. They seem responsive. Emails are a little slow. They're getting slower. And I had really good luck at the beginning dealing with their social media person on Instagram. And it's slowly gone downhill, making me, I guess, sad. I, that's really the only way to say it is sad. But a good is a company called Electro & Co. Or Electro & Company. They, um, which, little side note, love the 80s style stuff. Love the, the design they have. If anybody who knows me knows I'm a Radwood guy. I have a company that I'm starting, Radwood Restoration, where I restore, you know, 80s and 90s cars. So uh, love this. Keep this up. Love it. Moving on. The, um, got this kit here. It's a bigger motor, bigger controller. They say with the stock battery, it's supposed to put out 3,000 watts. I'm assuming, and everybody knows that I'm learning new to this electrical stuff. I'm assuming most of that comes from this controller here. The motor on it, the sticker says 2,300 watt output. So I'm assuming that they're overclocking this motor to be able to get this out. And then if and when I upgrade the battery, it's supposed to do 5,000 watts. 5,000 watts on that little bike. So we're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through tearing it down step by step what it actually takes to put this kit on. It does have two different battery leads. So I'm, I'm expecting these to be for different types of batteries, maybe the stock battery and the upgraded battery, I'm not sure. Uh, the only knock that I've seen so far is the fact that there is no instructions. There's no, um, hook this to that. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I'll tell you one thing I do like, all of their plugs, and I mean all of them, are water pack. That means that they are sealed, so it's gonna definitely be better because the all of them except for, I guess the ones that plug into the controller right there, but that means that they're gonna be, all these plugs that are exposed, they're gonna be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A little safer uh, looks like I got a electrical readout I mean like I said found this kit online I messaged them they are awesome to deal with they messaged me right back and got this kit ordered I had to place an order it took weeks for it to come in I, I'm I believe they have to put the kits together to order the parts I, one big positive is really normal looking dirt bike grips pretty close this one's a little swollen. They, they, they must put it on there because they know everybody's going to struggle getting it over there. It's fatter, but it's not as bad as the other throttle. And the um, Pro Taper, actual Pro Taper grip. So these are the Pro Taper hard pillow tops. So not a bad grip at all. I'll be happy for that. So we'll take this over to the bench. We'll tear that bike down and see exactly what we have to take off, what we have to do to put this on. Like I said, there's not an instruction manual instruction manual that I've seen. I looked on their website, didn't see it. I'm going to go and see what it would take if you were to get this, what it takes to pull it apart and put it on and maybe make a little instruction video for you and tell you how it goes. As you can see, I already got the radiator shroud off. I've been working with the plugs. They've sent me two throttles so far. I've told them that I do not believe it's throttle. It's a mistake, but the mess up, but it's got a full charge and nothing. So it's obviously there's some issues. They told me to remove the brake switch and anybody who watches the series knows the brake switches have been gone for a while. It ran fine. I think we just burned it up. Um, a lot of guys are just riding these things on the streets. A lot of guys are just doing willies with them and, and having fun. And th this is perfect for that. As an adult rider, it would be perfect for that. We ride these on pit bike tracks. We ride these in the trails. So I'm pulling huge hills and that kind of stuff. And I think we found the limit for this bike. But that's where Electro & Co. comes in because we're about to surpass that limit. 
All right, well, let's start by taking all the plastics off. We'll pull the seat. I got to be able to get to all this. So we'll pull that off and then we'll start comparing the parts. <laughs> the eight millimeter one right here I believe is what holds this seat on the 10 millimeter bolts hold this shield up eh, it's gonna have to come off anyway so that worked out there we'll pull the key off pulling this just to be able to get to the wires some of these wires are hard to get to I am going to unplug everything here. Just, there we go. And to be on the safe side, we're gonna remove this big fuse just to make sure everything is dead. I'll unplug the battery. Make sure they're all not hooked up. And then we'll fish them through. Oh, I see. So this is the motor wires there. This goes to the controller here. Zip tie removers. I'm going to drop this controller out. Kind of interesting how loose those were. We'll move on. Controller is out. Up next, I believe it'll loosen this chain up, and then we'll pull this motor off. All right, we've got this all out. We got all the parts out. There's not a lot to take off the bike. I mean, it's pretty much the whole powertrain, but there's not as much to it as there is to the Electro and Co kit. But the throttle we pulled off, the response and speed adjustment, the motor, and the speed controller. Speed controller for this one is bigger, aluminum all the way around. One issue we're going to have, we have to figure out a way to mount this. I've seen Sir Ronster put his on. It looked like he put it on with gaffer's tape. Um, I want to make it a little bit more permanent mount as we will be hopefully jumping this bike and probably crashing it multiple times. So we'll see how it holds up. Holds up. One thing I was surprised about was the motors are made by the same company. I mean, externally, the cases and everything look almost identical. The markings are the same. The bolts that hold it on are the same. Of course, it has 8.8 .8 bolt holding it in there. That does not take any torque against it or any leverage against it. So we're going to leave that as an 8.8. .8. We won't upgrade it right now because I don't think it'll make a difference. Same size sprocket, same style sprocket. It looks the same. The uh, This one here has no name branding on it besides the, the KC logo on it. This one says EMT motor. The voltage for this one is 72 volts. So this will hold up to 72 volts, which is pretty astounding. This one says here it'll hold the 60 volts. This is the factory one. So that means 60 volts is what it's supposed to be max. And its output is 2,000 watt, where this one is 2,300. The speed on it looks like the RPMs are going to go up by almost 500 RPMs with this motor. So both made in China. Like I said, it's going to be quite an easy bolt in. So we'll get the motor in. Like I said, that will be the easy part. And then we'll figure out a mounting way to get this mounted in there securely, safe. And um, whatever I do, I'll show you exactly how I do it. So, all right. Next thing to do, let's get parts in this bike. I just went ahead and pulled this subframe off so I could show you what we're dealing with here. This piece mounts like this from the factory like from this this is the stock controller the dc brushless controller that comes on the e-box 2.0 it's in there it has some adjustment on this side as you can see the slots there so it could fit different size controllers which i thought was going to make this just a straight drop in as you can see battery motor controller hook there but this will not sit down through there. As you can see, it hits the subframe before it gets anywhere close, even if you tried to do it this way. The problem with it gets you a little closer going that way, but now you have this stuff exposed more to the elements 
stuff like that. What I'm going to do is I made some little brackets, some standoffs. This here is an inch and a quarter. We're going to put those there. And then these are an inch. Oh, excuse me. Two inches. They're going to go there. That way the heat sink is out in the fresh air. And this will bolt in and sit like that. But that's the way I'm resolving this issue. I did not come with another bracket, didn't come with any instructions, like I said, to say, hey, hook this up this way or that way. So this is how I've resolved to fix this. I, like I did see, said earlier, um, Sir Ronster had some gaffers tape on it to hold it in place. So I'm going to go this way and I'll show you how it looks all bolted up. All right, I got it in there. Got it all mounted up. It will clear everything. Heat sink is out in the open air. Hopefully it'll help it keep it cool. The flat guard, all that kind of stuff will also clear. So we'll get everything bolted back up. Got my wires run to the controller. All I have to do now is run the wires in here to this controller. They have cool little covers that snap on to protect that. And we'll have the same one here, protect those once we get it all mounted. So. Let's get this back on the bike and move on to the next steps. All right. Controller is mounted. Got the bike pretty close to wired up. They got a perfect plug match for that. Already connected. Put in the large 60 amp fuse. Need to zip tie a couple of these out of the way. But I run it through there. Took me a second to realize that the color match is up here. Blue green, yellow, run the wires. The factory had a big mess of wires all inside there. Obviously this does no longer have that. Are you sure that this does no longer, this doesn't have it any longer. And then, oh, let's see. Oh yeah. All right, power on. Got our volt reading there. Put it on one. Let's see. Oh. She's alive. As you can tell, you can not even tell. It's changed. Looks like the same bike. A few differences on the wiring. As we put the big fuse there. Make it easier to get to anyhow. And the motor says ETM. You do lose use of the key and the meter, but you have your voltmeter there, so it just turns off. And then your three power switches. There you go. It is mounted on, it runs. Haven't got a chance to test ride it. That's coming up here shortly. But just real quick, go over the tools you're gonna need. Some end wrenches, 10, 12, 14, and a 17 is what I wind up using. I had the 8 and a 10 ratchet. The right here, we definitely need these clips because you're going to want a bag of zip ties. It doesn't come with any zip ties, so you're going to need those. The Phillips head screwdriver for connecting your wires. An Allen key, 3 millimeter Allen key for tightening down the stuff on the handlebars does have one extra plug. I'm assuming this is for another bike because this kit fits quite a few different bikes. A plethora of stickers they give you. I'm, I love the kit. I love it bolts in. I'm excited to see how big of a difference it makes. This motor is a little bit bigger, so we will push some more power through it with this controller. Uh, not the happiest of how it mounted. I don't know that's how they want you to mount it. They don't give any instructions. So. You have to know what you're doing. If I had any suggestions whatsoever for Electro & Co would be to throw in a just a printed off sheet of paper that shows some instructions for the different bikes that it's supposed to fit. That way it gives people, I guess you call it like a, a game plan as they move forward. So next video, I'm going to do testing. I've run out of time. Uh, Y'all know I have our podcast, the Moto X Pod Show. 
I am about to go do that right now. So unfortunately, it'll be night by the time I get back. Here in Texas, the weather's nice and it's even better in the morning. So tomorrow morning, I am going to go test this out. What that means is this video will drop and either that night or the next day, the next video will drop. So subscribe to see that as I put this thing through its paces up against the mighty CRF 110.